Good morning, y'all, guys. I hope you're having a great day. So welcome to my tech stack for 2025. So the current tech stack I'm using is the one that allows me to do my job as a software engineer daily. So this is the stack that I've been using since years now. So it's probably the tech stack that I will use also in 2026. So grab a cup of coffee, have a seat, stay tuned and keep on coding. And a huge shout out and thank you to Screamba for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, I know what you're thinking. Daniel, man, finally, you're talking about your tech stack. Yeah, I've gotten a few comments asking for it. So today we are diving in. I want to walk you through some of the technologies I use, nothing fancy, nothing I had to chase around the internet for. These are tools I've actually worked with for years in real professional environments. Stuff I've learned, studied, deep dived into and generally gotten better at over time. And of course, if you've got suggestions or ideas, drop them in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite tech stack is. All right, give me a sec. I'm actually gonna stand up for a moment. I've been sitting here editing for hours and my back is starting to send me those friendly reminder notifications like, hey Daniel, maybe move before we turn into a pretzel. So yeah, quick stretch and we are upright. Honestly, this is the part nobody tells you about when you get into tech. You spend so much time sitting that standing up feels like a whole lifestyle change, but okay, I'm good now. Let's get back into it we were talking tech stacks, right? Cool, because this is where it actually gets fun. Wait, before I go any further, maybe a quick intro for anyone who's new here. I'm a full stack developer or full stack engineer, whichever term you prefer. But honestly, I'm way more into backend stuff. That's where I have the most fun. And just so you know, I don't have a CS degree. I kinda just found my way into this career. I was lucky enough to land a developer job where I live and from there I just kept moving. I switched to companies a few times, slowly leveled up and eventually got to a point where the salary made sense. But in the beginning, man, I took anything. Internships, short-term contracts, underpaid gigs, all of it. The money wasn't great, but the experience the stuff I learned during those early jobs was way too valuable to just throw away. Those opportunities basically built the foundation for everything I can do now. But yeah, let's talk real shit now. I've been working with Java for years and honestly, Spring and Spring Boot are still some of the best frameworks out there. I've used them professionally. I've used them for side projects and they've basically become my comfort zone at this point. And yeah, you'll see a bunch of tools in the Java ecosystem, but it's not because developers love adding complexity for no reason. It's because there are the tools real companies actually use. They solve real problems and they make backend life so much easier. And the cool thing about Spring is how fast it keeps evolving. Spinning up a project is ridiculously simple. You got to start that Spring.io Take a few dependencies, hit generate, and boom, you've got a real API ready to build on. Like, dude, it's amazing. But bootstrapping is fun, but not enough. Like, cool, you've got your spring project running, but a real app needs a real persistence. And for me, Postgres is the go-to. It's solid, it's reliable, and it handles pretty much anything you throw at it without complaining. And another thing people underestimate is how important your build setup actually is. Maven plugins, absolute lifesavers. When you pair that with Flyaway for database migrations, you suddenly have predictable version schema changes instead of that hope and pray SQL situation we've all been in. Flyaway basically keeps your database history clean and your deployments sane. And then, on top of that, you need the proper authorization, like not just the login forms duct taped together. I'm talking real identity management. That's where Keycloak comes in. It's powerful, it's flexible, and it saves you from reinventing the entire auth wheel, which is a wheel you don't want to reinvent. So yeah, 
all these pieces together, that's when the backend stops being just code and starts feeling like a real system. Which actually brings me to today's sponsor, Scrimba. They just released this massive new course called the Backend Developer Path. And if you're trying to break into backend or level up your fundamentals, this thing is seriously packed. It focuses on the real skills companies expect right now, especially in the JavaScript ecosystem. So you'll be diving into Node, Express, Databases, SQL, Git, TypeScript, APIs, DevOps, cybersecurity, algorithms, literally everything you need to build real backend services that actually ship. One thing Scrimba does better than any other platform is their interactive Scrim technology. If you've never tried it, you can pause the lesson, jump straight into the code, edit it, run it, all inside the browser. It's like mixing a tutorial with a real coding environment. And it helps stuff stick away faster than just watching videos. And the path is fully self-paced, which means you can do it after work, on weekends, whenever. They start you off with some JavaScript challenges to make sure you're ready, and after that, you roll straight into the backend modules. By the end of the path, you'll know how to build reliable, secure, production-ready services from scratch. And the cool part, you can get 20% off the pro plan using my link, and that even stacks with the annual plan, which already saves you 50%. So it's a pretty huge discount. So yeah, if backend is your next move, definitely check out Scrimba's backend developer path. But here's the thing, React, Node and TypeScript don't live alone. That whole ecosystem comes with its own set of tools that act like extra layers to make building stuff way faster and way cleaner. Take Chakra UI for example. It's one of my favorite UI frameworks just because it removes so much friction. You get clean components, solid accessibility and this really intuitive styling system that lets you build interfaces without fighting CSS for three hours. It's like everything you need to make a front end look good, but without the pain. And then there is 10 stack query, which you might remember as React to query back in the day. This tool is honestly a game changer when it comes to managing server state. Instead of manually handling loading states, caching, refetching, error handling, 10 stack query just wraps all of that in a clean API. It keeps your data synced with your backend in a super predictable way. And once you start using it, you kind of don't even want to go back to the old use effect era. Now, on top of that, I also self host Superbase, and man, this thing is incredible. You get SQL migrations with Prisma ORM, full authentication with forms, GWTs, magic links, plus bucket storage for files and generic CRUD operations. It's basically everything you need to bootstrap a serious backend without spinning up a bunch of separate services. Technically, I could use the built-in Superbase client for everything and skip the manual migrations, but I feel way more confident having full SQL versioning. And since Superbase gives you Postgres hosting out of the box, like, why not use it? It's stable, it's fast, and it fits perfectly with the way I like to structure my projects. To actually ship all this stuff, I used to rely on paid services, just like many of you probably do. And the big advantage there is the high availability you get. Your apps stay up, the infrastructure is managed for you, and you don't have to worry about random shutdowns or hardware hiccups. It's convenient, honestly, super convenient. But once I got into Home Lab, everything changed. I started deploying simple APIs and containers on a Raspberry Pi or a mini PC running multiple VMs and suddenly I could customize everything exactly the way I wanted. Total control, total flexibility. 
For example, I used to host GitLab myself, but the runners were just way too heavy for my own lab setup. So I switched to Giti, which is super lightweight and perfect for self-hosting. I run it either directly on my machine or inside a VM, and I set up runners so that whenever I commit from my IDE, it triggers the whole pipeline. Builds, tests, deployments, all automated, all self-hosted. And after that, it's up to you how you expose everything with your network setup. Anyway, thanks for watching guys. I didn't cover every single tool I use, but now you've got a solid overview of the tech stack that supports me as a software developer.